Hello everyone. So this tutorial is um, about uh, discrete ordinate radiation model. Uh, I had created one for the surface to surface model. So this one would be focused on discrete ordinate radiation model. Okay. Uh, so it's the same geometry I took the tutorial from ANSYS for radiation and natural convection. Uh, the geometry is a cube of half meter uh, length. <clears throat> and the hot wall is a low x this one and this is high x uh, low y high y wall uh, high z wall and low z wall okay so anyways i didn't change anything in here uh, i'll go to the setup and we'll try to explain what you need to know about the uh, uh, when you are actually using the discrete radiation model and when to apply and what is the advantages <clears throat> all right so before setting up so let's see i'll apply gravity 89.81 okay so this was the cube i can check it no negative volume let's say steady state in the models, I would enable the energy equation. Um, it would be a laminar because no inlet or outlet. So Reynolds number should be pretty low. So I'll use the laminar model. And uh, in the radiation panel, so I will not apply solar load for this one. I will try to create one which would apply solar load, for, but not in this tutorial. So I'll select discrete ordinate models, okay? When, like what's the difference between surface to surface and discrete ordinate? I think uh, I explained about that, but let me go through it a little bit. So again, this is a tutorial uh, in YouTube in this channel with Magnus 101, which explained the model, like uh, how they're solving the equation really well. So if you want to know you can go through it but I will only explain what you need to know when you're actually setting up the model and so uh, as you said in here surface to surface uh, does not uh, include the participation of gas so so if the gas is absorbing the uh, absorbing the heat or scattering the, uh, the radiation uh, then uh, surface to surface is not a good model for your case you need to use a discrete ordinate model discrete ordinate uh, works for those kind of scenario where the gas do participate and even if it doesn't participate still discrete ordinate works well so if you are confused about which radiation model to use and you don't know which one would be suitable i would recommend starting with discrete ordinates okay uh, let's see so gas can absorb and scatter just i explained the way this kid ordinate uh like these are the things you need to know so i'll explain so as you can see influent when i selected this kid ordinate it is uh, showing parameters like energy iteration for radiation nutrition it, it s2s has that as well as you can see actually this is uh like for different models uh, they actually solve a radiative heat transfer equation okay and there is also the energy equation from the navier stokes so what this one uh, explains is uh, like uh, uh, the the model the the specific model radiative heat transfer equation would be solved at every 10 times of uh, of energy equation is solved so if energy equation is uh, being solved at every iteration, then the discrete ordinate uh, radiation uh, equation would be solved at every 10 iteration. Okay, and the way they do it is because due to uh, parameters, uh, it becomes computationally more extensive. So they do that to reduce the computational cost and also they can apply this approach uh, for the radiation model it's because uh, unlike convective and conductive heat transfer radiative heat transfer um, changes uh, very slowly okay there is no sudden uh, even due to high temperature there is no sudden uh, 
uh, uh, temperature change or like is no there is no big change but again it depends on your problem if you are working for uh, on an extreme type of problem then you might uh, want to get this value to one okay the theta division and the psi divisions I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, uh, the pixels is just, I'll, I'll explain these things. Uh, non gray model, uh, number of bands is when, if you are considering your um, radiative heat transfer for uh, gray wall, uh, uh, or uh, if you're like, uh, because this, the DO radiation model considers scattering of the, uh, of the radiation beam or the irradi irradiation. So if it is scattered into different bands, like it's it's like similar to you can think of it is when we pass sunlight through a prism, it it gives you different colors or different bands of light. So if if it is that kind of a problem, you can uh, increase the number of bands, and for each band, what would be the wavelength? Okay. So uh, for, this is for those kind of problems, okay? I'll, I'll make it simple, and but you know where to find the boundary condition, where, where to, how to put the boundary condition for those kind of non-gray type of scenario, okay? But we'll make it simple. So this is a gray model and uh, angular discretization, okay? The theta division and the phi divisions. So I'll go over here. Uh, DO model considering considers radiation, uh, radiation travels at a straight line, like a beam. Uh, and uh, the radiation intensity is a function of its coordinate in space and the direction of the beam. So you can think of it as a light, similar to light. So light is light as an intensity based on the space and the direction of the beam. Okay. So uh, this is the uh, radiation beam. Uh, this is the intensity and the angle. And uh, okay, so I'll skip these things. Not important. Let's see. Okay. So th this is the main concept for the DO model. So DO model considers if you imagine this is a this is the cell. So our uh, irradiation is coming from all the directions, uh, infinite amount of directions, okay? Uh, so infinite beam is coming from all around you and coming into it, and then they're calculating that based on the uh, incoming beam. But we are solving the problem discreetly, uh, in Fluent. Uh, uh, so what Fluent does is um, they say, uh, well, let's divide it into a discrete number of beams for every every cell. Okay, so usually they uh, they divide it into octants, eight divisions, so eight beam directions. So as you can see, eight beam is uh, coming from eight different directions, uh, based on the intensity and the uh, the angle. This angle can vary, but this is an ideal situation. Like every from all the surroundings radiative heat transfer is coming to you, but the angle can vary. It can go out, it can be horizontal, it, based on the uh, magnitude and direction. Anyways, so the concept is uh, the beam is coming to the cell. So uh, instead of infinite number of beam coming in, uh, you discretize it into a specific number. And uh, uh, each octant, they call it octant because they, there is eight divisions. So each octant, uh, you can uh, discretize, discretize it more by the number of segments, n theta. This th n theta is actually uh, this theta divisions, okay? So how many divisions you want to have in each octant, okay? As this works with the octants, as this fluent works with the octants uh, for the angular discretization, and how many divisions you want, uh, angular divisions you want, that is your theta divisions, okay? The phi division is, um, so this is a 2D problem. So if you consider this one as x axis, y axis, uh, then this is theta, but if you consider z axis as well, which is perpendicular to this surface, 
uh, paper, uh, say in forward and backward. Uh, so there would be like two more ang uh, like uh, uh, two more uh, directions. So that's why for the 3D problem there would be like eight four times. They said four because they consider it as a symmetry, and they are saying like four beams, incoming beams, and uh, uh, four incoming beams, and two for the 3D problem there is front and back, so there would be like two uh, two more for each octane, so there would be like eight in 3D. But the thing is, front and back has an angle as well. They call it five. Okay. So if this is the number of divisions uh, theta, then the front and back along the z-axis, the number of divisions, that would be your phi, n phi, you can say. Uh, it's not shown in here, but that's your n phi. So this is what theta division is and what phi division is. If you increase the number, it would be more accurate because the beam uh, intensity would be calculated more accurately and the angles. Uh, so if you want more accuracy and if a problem is more sensitive, uh, then you can use more more values, more divisions in here. But if you don't know, just go with the default first, compare it, try to validate it. If it doesn't work, increase the values. The pixel is, uh, you can think of it as, as, let's say I have more circles, more circles. So if I have another circle in here, this would be divided, like one more circle in here, this would be divided into two pixels, okay? So think of the pixel like that. So just uh, think of it as a, as a grid. So that simplifies things. So this is your uh, number of division and uh, the, uh, the pixel. And uh, uh, let's see. Okay, so we are solving for extra for n theta, for 2D, for and 8, n theta and phi, for in 3D. So this slows down the solution. That's why, as the same thing he explained, for that they are solving uh, this uh, the radiative equation for every 10 iteration, uh, unlike the energy equation, which is solved at every one iteration. And I think. There is nothing more important in here. Okay, so I'll go with the default, but now you know what is the theta division and the phi division is. Uh, I think I covered everything. Okay, and it's asking me that, uh, it's telling me that available material properties have changed. Material properties, you can see the console, it's saying uh, like selecting constant method for absorption co coefficient has been added and scattering coefficient has been added and refractive index has been added. So these three properties, these three parameters have been added and you need to input the data if you want to change it. Now, where do I change it? <clears throat> like uh, these three coefficients didn't come with S2S model, the surface to surface radiation model. It's because surface to surface uh, does not consider uh, uh, scattering uh, because of the medium, okay? Uh, it, it doesn't consider uh, the, ga the gas participation in the, in the scattering of the, or, or scattering or the absorption of the uh, radiative heat trans, uh, radiative, uh, uh, like the, the irradiation, okay? So if we go to the material, so select the material, and now in the properties of the material, you can see new parameters like absorption coefficient. So how much do you want your uh, like uh, material like in, in your air to absorb the radiation when it's uh, when the radiative heat is passing through the medium when you, the radiative heat is passing from the hot wall towards the other walls. Okay, how much the gas would absorb it. By zero, you're saying like it should not absorb anything similar to, and it should act similar to the surface-to-surface -surface model. Scattering coefficient, same thing. If you specify the scattering coefficient, uh, you can uh, select like how much it should uh, scatter or diffuse, okay? Uh, when it's passing through the gas. 
if it's zero, then it's similar to the surface to surface model. Uh, scattering function, how it should scatter. Should it uh, be isotropic scattering? Should it be an, an isotropic scattering? You can specify that. The refractive index is uh, uh, like how much do we want it to uh, bend? Uh, for example, I will give you a visual representation. So this is your incident ray or radiation beam coming in. And due to the medium, the gas, uh, in our case, uh, if you consider uh, diffraction, so let's say uh, the incident angle changed a little bit, okay? For surface to surface, it goes straight, okay? But uh, for in DO model, you can specify at a, an angle of refraction, okay? But uh, the refraction index one, what, what does it mean? It, what it means is, uh, so let me show you what is the angle of refraction. Angle of refraction is, if you say n is your refractive index, then sine i over uh, sine r, which is i is your angle of incidence and r is your angle of refraction. If they are equal, then your refractive index becomes one. Okay, so this way you can specify your refractive index based on your requirement. For one means there is no refraction, it's going straight. Basically, gas is not scattering the radiative uh, beam. Okay, so I'm uh, not so it's it's exactly it should the way the DO model has set up right now by default, it should exactly work as the uh, the surface to surface model but I have showed you like where and how to change it uh, to bend it to your requirement, okay? So in the wall boundary condition, uh, so if I go to thermal, so this would be the other walls. Uh, I would specify the same way. I can either use radiation, I can use mixed. Again, this thermal tab is mainly for, uh, because the wall has a temperature so I'll specify 293 like previously. And uh, uh, the uh, due to the temperature of the wall, uh, there would be convective and radiative heat transfer from that wall, okay? So it's, it's that properties, okay? Free stream temperature and uh, the, the gas temperature near the wall and uh, wall temperature and external emissivity is how much, like uh, however, uh, like whatever the temperature is, uh, it has a maximum, uh, like whatever it is absorbed to emit. Uh, if it's an ideal scenario, in which case it would be one, but if you don't want, uh, if there is losses or if it doesn't scatter uh, the 100%, uh, like if it doesn't emit the 100%, you can specify something like 0.9, 90% of the absorbed it is being emitted. So uh, again, uh, I'm saying absorbed, but it's due to the temperature of the wall, okay? Uh, it's related to the convective and radiative transfer due to the temperature of the wall. Uh, I can specify a wall thickness of 0.05. And this radiation is uh, the internal surface or internal uh, surface of the wall. Whatever the radiative in a beam is hitting on the wall, how much how of it will uh, emit, absorb, or being reflect or, or be reflected. Okay. Internal emissivity one means again there it's a, it's an opaque wall, so there would be no transmissivity. If you want it to transmit, uh, then you need to use the same transparent wall. But uh, uh, if it's opaque wall, then it has only uh, uh, emissivity and uh, the reflectivity, okay? So emissivity equals absorptivity because this is an ideal uh, opaque wall according to Kirchhoff's law. I, I explained that in the surface to surface model, so I will not go over there now. So this emissivity one means everything, like whatever is hitting on the wall, everything is being absorbed, okay? So in other other way to say it is nothing is being reflected. Now, if in your case, if it's the reflection is very important and you know uh, percentage, like maybe I'm using a very shiny coating, uh, like for example, chromium plating 
or uh, some other uh, uh, coating that has a high reflectivity, high specular reflectivity, then uh, if your reflectivity is, let's say, 40% 40, 40 or 80%, or let's say, then your internal emissivity would be 0.2, okay? So it means 20% of it is being absorbed and emitted, and 80% of it is 80% uh, incident radiation is being reflected, okay? Um, but if I say one, it's an ideal scenario, everything is being absorbed and nothing is being reflected, okay? And uh, let's say this is 90%, okay? So 10% of it is being reflected. Uh, and the diffuse fraction is, uh, uh, this is, uh, like how much, like, uh, like uh, however uh, much is being absorbed, how much of it is being diffused, okay? Uh, or like uh, like uh, the, the radiation intensity heating on the wall, how much of it is being diffused? So if your diffuse fraction is one, then you can say the incident radiation is 100% being diffused. So... Uh, doesn't matter from which, uh, like, uh, like what is the angle of incident on the wall of the beam, the the hundred percent of the beam is being diffused. Okay, but if you don't want it to be diffused and you want specular reflectivity, uh, you can specify like nothing would be diffused. Everything would be in a straight line. Okay, nothing would be uh, fall upon and being scattered in all direction. It would. Uh, reflect at an angle of incident and it would uh, uh, like it would fall upon an angle of incident and it would reflect at, an, at the same angle of incident okay so uh, this way you can play around with it if you say one basically you're saying surface to surface model which has a hundred percent diffuse fraction so by default in the surface to surface model diffuse fraction is always one Okay, you cannot change that because that's how the model was set up. But in DO model, you can uh, change, you can, you have the option to change it if you are dealing with a different kind of problem. So that's what diffuse fraction is. I think I covered everything. Uh, so what I will do is I'll copy this boundary condition in the other four walls. Okay. And uh, the hot wall. I will apply a temperature boundary condition. Let's say 470. I forgot what I used for the other model, but I think around this range. Mm. Okay, radiation. Okay, fine. Everything is diffuse and everything. Uh, okay, I think I set up everything. Let's uh, again, unlike uh, the the DO, the surface to surface model, I didn't change the relaxation factor for the momentum. And let's see how this model performs. Okay. So I have initialized it. Set up 1000 just in case. And I'll come back when this is converged. Okay. So uh, simulation is done. And from the scale residual, you can see the solution has been very stable. Okay, uh, unlike the surface to surface model for this problem, and I didn't have to change the uh, relaxation factor. I don't want to change this one actually. Uh, and uh, let's see the result. So if I go to contour, let's see the temperature. Let's see the wall temperature. So there you go. This is the hot wall. Let's see the banded one. Looks reasonable. Okay. And uh, similar to the surface to surface model, I have a very similar result. And uh, let's see. I'll create the surface. Okay. Let's create one in here. XY plane, create one there. Oops. Mm. 
Okay, and this is not the wall temperature, and it's static temperature. So this is the static temperature uh, in y, z axis. Uh, very reasonable result. And uh, this is the temperature mm, in x, y axis uh, in the middle of it. Again, very reasonable result. Uh, you can compare these results with the uh, try the surface to surface model and the deoradiation model and compare the results. And again, if it's not like in like in surface to surface model, what I did was increasing the phases uh, in the cluster. Okay, but in DO model, uh, if you want to refine it, like if you are not getting uh, a result you expect, then go to the model. Uh, and, and increase the theta divisions and the phi divisions and check the result again. Okay, run the case again. You can even reduce the, the number uh, in the energy equation. The radiation equation is being solved. Uh, then check your result again. If it's not accurate, then play with these parameters and see if you can get the result. You should be able to get it. And, uh, the model is more simpler uh, 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 to apply because the limitations is less. But again, this should be computationally a bit more expensive. Like as you can see, I, it took more iteration to solve. But again, uh, there are pros and cons. So uh, I hope uh, these things uh, are of great help. Thank you very much.